It seems a lot of people were disappointed with the conclusion of our previous episode number four video where we kind of debunked all the retire overseas for under $1,000 per month YouTube video claims as being overly optimistic and not within average reasonable expectations. In that video, we attempted to put together a more reasonable monthly budget for two. We say more reasonable because we put together a budget that we viewed as being all inclusive or as comprehensive as possible including many expenses that shouldn't be overlooked, but often are. In that video, the monthly expenses totaled about $3,800. While we still agree with the points made in that video, $3,800 was a shock to some viewers. So the questions became, is it possible to retire or otherwise live anywhere for under $1,000 per month? Well, there's a big difference between possible and probable. In this video, we will explore the possibility of retiring somewhere overseas for under $1,000 per month. By the way, the answer is yes, it is possible. And we think you'll be presently surprised how easy it would be if you had the determination and willpower to pay only for the absolute must-have necessities so stay tuned to find out how. Welcome to the Outback Retirement Channel. Glad to have you with us. Here at Outback Retirement, we know firsthand that long-term travel takes planning, commitment, and even a leap of faith. If your plans include a nomadic lifestyle of endless travel and you want to learn more, you are in the right place. So let's get started. Believe it or not, it depends more on you and your determination than the country you choose that will determine if retiring under $1,000 per month is a possibility or not. Of course, choosing a country that is cheaper than most to begin with increases your chances of success, but the rest is up to you. You'll need to decide between the necessities you must have versus the things you'd like to have versus the things that you can live without. Let's start by picking the least expensive country possible. Recently, Andrew Henderson said on his Nomad Capitalist YouTube channel that Vietnam ranked as the cheapest country to live in in 2024. Since we are there and have been for several months, that makes things easy for us to investigate. Let's start with the must-haves. It's obvious that we all need food and shelter at a minimum, and we need to sign a long-term rental agreement to keep housing costs to a minimum. Being we don't think anyone should compromise on safety and cleanliness to save a dollar, we're not going to search for apartments in what appears to be an unsafe area under unsanitary conditions just to find the absolute lowest cost. We quickly found an apartment on Booking.com with a 9.8 out of 10 exceptional rating by 11 total reviewers in Saigon's District 1 for $450 per month. Add to that the average total utilities bill of $100 according to VinPearl.com. It's worth noting that there would be many places in Vietnam less expensive than in very popular Saigon District 1, but it would be hard to beat the convenience because anything and everything you could possibly want, you could easily walk to. That eliminates any required transportation costs. Furthermore, you can't book for longer than 90 days through booking.com, so this arrangement is to get your foot in the door, gives you time to settle in, explore the neighborhood, and find even cheaper place to rent by being discounted for signing a long-term lease. Meanwhile, you're spending only $550 per month in a great and convenient location that is still budget-friendly. Next must-have is food. 
precisely why we put you in Saigon's District 1 because there are tons of food options that are sure to fit anyone's budget. Two people can easily eat for about $10 per day or $300 per month assuming neither of you drink alcohol. That's the trick. If you want to keep expenses below $1,000 per month, you can't afford bad habits. You can easily find bun mi or Vietnamese style sub sandwiches from between 80 cents to $1.20. cents. Pho, mi guan, and other Vietnamese style soups are available from between $1.25 cents to $2.25. cents. You can easily sneak in a hot black coffee at an outside sidewalk cafe for as low as 65 cents and still stay within budget. Occasionally, you can treat yourself to a Highlands coffee inside with air conditioning, but that will cost you closer to $2. Street food carts and open air markets are usually your cheapest options. You can also find cheap options in small, family owned street front restaurants that are usually the front part of their home. They've simply converted the front of their home into a food prep and service area. That keeps prices lower than conventional restaurants. If you are seeking western style food or something like sushi, you'll pay a higher price and since it almost never tastes like it does back home, you might as well find a handful of your favorite Vietnamese foods and eat cheaply like locals do. With necessities only, we're up to $850 per month. For two persons, I'd say that's going to be about as cheap as you will get in Saigon or Hanoi, which are the two most expensive areas in Vietnam. There are cheaper options in more rural areas. You'd most likely be able to cut rent costs down as low as $200 per month in a rural area especially if you're willing to rent a room in someone's home, but you may have to share a bathroom. No pain, no gain, they say, or in this case, no sacrifice, no low expenses. But luckily for you, we are putting you in a better situation in Saigon District 1 because we think that's the decision most would make on this budget. But remember, so far, there is no alcohol, no gym, Certainly no cigarettes, no phones, no massages, no nail salons, no hair or makeup visits. Now it's decision time. The necessities are covered. Although hailing a taxi or grab bike is easy, most of us would agree that a phone surely would make life easier and perhaps safer, especially in emergencies. We won't call it a must have, but we will call it a should have. Since there are two of you, you likely both already have smartphones that you bring with you. You could keep your phone service provider from your home country, but there are a few issues with that. Assuming, like most of us, you have an unlimited call and data plan, you're probably paying around $80 per month per line. With two of you on the same account with two lines, you probably are getting a discount and are paying about $140 per month total. You could tack on an international day plan on each line that maxes out around $120 per line per month or $180 for two lines on the same account per month. However, that could total a whopping $320 per month and surely doom your $1,000 per month budget. An option is to keep your home provider, but not get the international plans. Instead, you can call each other and anyone back home for free as long as you have internet service. To do this, in your phone settings, turn off cellular data, turn off roaming, and turn on both airplane mode and Wi-Fi calling. Always leave your settings like this and all your phone calls will be free while connected to the Wi-Fi. Having Viber, WhatsApp, 
FaceTime and Google Voice apps also gives you additional free Wi-Fi calling and video options should any of them not be working at any given time. Most Saigon restaurants and businesses have public Wi-Fi and of course you'll have Wi-Fi at your apartment. A second issue with a service contract with a provider back in the U.S. is, for some reason, they don't like it when they see you have not made any calls from within the U.S. for more than 90 days. In fact, they don't like it so much they say they will terminate your service. This is regardless of whether you buy an international plan or not. An interesting fact is we have AT&T and they notified us the very first day we were out of the country to tell us they automatically added the international plan to each line. Obviously they picked up a signal letting them know our phones were out of the country. They did give us a, a choice to opt out. Since they only charge each day if you use it up to a maximum of 10 days Per month, we decided to keep it in case of an emergency and we had to place a call to each other or back home while not connected to the internet. To date, we have not needed to use it, thus we have not been charged. We'll soon reach the 90 day limit and are awaiting notification of service termination. If anyone knows why they do this or of a U.S. provider that doesn't do this, we would love to hear from you. We checked with AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, and they all say 90 days is the limit. They still make money off of you, so this is mysterious to us as why they would terminate your service. And returning to the U.S. every 90 days just to avoid this is ridiculous and expensive. We'll see if they actually terminate our service or not and let you know. Third and final issue with having only a phone with your home country service provider is you cannot call anyone using a different country service provider anywhere in the world unless you have an international plan and pay additional high cost per minute for each call you place and those rates vary widely from country to country. If you make a lot of international calls to many different countries that will be an additional expense for you regardless of what country your service provider is from. This alone could potentially bust your budget. Luckily, there are many cheaper options when it comes to communications. It pays to research as many options and prices as possible before choosing. Our solution was to pay the $140 per month for two lines on one account to our U.S. service provider since 95% of our calls are to the U.S. We brought with us a third smartphone that was older and got a Viettel service provider SIM card in Vietnam to make local calls with. There are, of course, many data plans and prices but you can easily get a SIM card valid for 30 days of unlimited data for about $10. A compromise would be to ditch one phone and one number with your home country provider and just share one phone with one number since you'll likely be together 99% of the time anyway. That will reduce your home country provider bill to $80 for one number plus $10 per month SIM card and a second phone for local calls. Since compromising is what's required with such a tight budget, that is the example we will use here. Okay, so far that's $550 a month, which includes utilities, $300 for food, $90 for phones for a total of $940 per month for two persons. That leaves you with a $60 buffer. For one person traveling alone, you can half the food expense and a month would cost you $790 and you'd have a $210 buffer. As a double check, we went to internationalliving.com where they list out a monthly budget for two persons to live a middle class lifestyle 
in either Hanoi or Saigon. They say you can do that within a range of between $899 to $1,469 per month. So the answer is a definite yes. Living in Vietnam for under $1,000 per month is possible if you're willing to be very frugal and have no expensive habits. If you are an exercise fanatic, these buffers would allow you to go to the gym two to three times per week as it is easy to find gym rates at $4 or less per day even less if you buy a month or longer membership. Otherwise, you'll be doing a lot of walking as exercise anyway to eliminate transportation costs. That's why we put you in a walkable area convenient to everything. There are also a lot of nice public parks in District 1 with exercise equipment that is free to use. If it's two of you, you could learn to trim each other's hair Otherwise, I got a sidewalk barber to cut my hair for $2.80, which even included a 20% tip. What would I do if I were on a budget this tight? I'd be saving all my buffer money each month to pay for any future medical expenses or to buy clothes when needed. I'd cook most meals at home, which would cut my food bill in half. I'd also be constantly trying to figure out how to increase my income. While I could tough it if I really needed to or wanted to, I'm of the opinion that seeking continuous improvement is a virtue. I'm also never truly happy unless I can save a set amount of money consistently each month for an emergency fund and to invest. Also, my philosophy is if you can't make ends meet in your home country, you're not likely to be any more successful anywhere else. That takes us back to one of my opening statements and beliefs. Whether or not you can live on a tight budget anywhere in the world is more determined by you and your efforts to do so rather than where you choose to live. Learn from others that have little choice. There are minimum wage workers in any big high rent city anywhere in the world. How do they survive in a place like Beverly Hills, California? They walk a lot or take public transportation, have multiple roommates sharing expenses, pay with only cash, don't have credit cards, and otherwise only spend on the basic must-have necessities. Think about this. It's a mindset you must have to live within your means, regardless of how much that means. If you found value in this video, please hit like. If you want to ensure you do not miss future videos, please hit subscribe. If you know others who might be interested in this type of content, please hit share. Thank you for watching. Hope you'll join us again.